Good morning, EAU friends. I'm Manuela Tutolo, and uh, I'm one of the associate editors of the uh, platform of the EAU on functional urology, Urolats. And it's a pleasure for me to be here with my friend and my colleague, Professor Veronique Fe, which is one of the most experienced functional urologists in Europe. I'm very happy to have you here, Veronique, and very welcome. And, uh, you know, we have had many sessions on functional urology in these days, very interesting. And yesterday we had an interesting session on the role of urodynamics in male LUTs. Uh, and we have controversial results. But in the field of female LUTs, and especially in OAB patients, we know that the, 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 the position of the guidelines is quite uh, um, strong and definitive. What do you think about the fact that the guidelines counsel not to perform urodynamics examination in uh, female patients with OAB uncomplicated? Yeah. So thank you, Manuela, for your warm welcome. Uh, dear colleagues, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've got a conflict of interest uh, since I'm part of the guidelines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I take the responsibility of what's okay. it's written there. Um, yes, I think that to do urodynamics, you have to answer a question. If you don't have any question to answer, you should not perform urodynamics. That's why for female patients who just complain of a OAB, not, uh, idiopathic OAB, without any other comorbidities, any uh, difficulties, you should not perform your dynamics. You know? So just keep it very simple. If you do your dynamics, it means that you have a question and you want the answer because it's going to change the decision okay. of, uh, of management of the patient. Really, really, really interesting. And what do you think, uh, if you have uh, a kind of uh, gray zone cases like uh, mixed urinary incontinence, so complaints of OAB with incontinence, uh, what do you do with this patient? How do you manage this patient? Does your approach change or you, you, you try to follow the, the benefits and the harms, as we know in, in the guidelines underlined that we should uh, balance benefit and the harms on uh, of uh, what we choose for these patients. So how do you, how do you manage these patients? Yeah, I think you're, you're right because it's a very difficult situation, mixed urinary incontinence, and unfortunately it's really one of the most frequent situations. It's based on a discussion with the patient about uh, what is the most bothersome symptoms first. Is it stressed urinary incontinence or is it urge urinary incontinence? Usually it's urge urinary incontinence, but sometimes it can change. So first, prioritize. Uh, talk with the patients. I'm not a super urologist who is going to solve all the problems at the same time. We are going first to prioritize which, one, which symptoms bother you most and we will work on it. And then after, we will see uh, for the rest of the symptoms. First, so this discussion of the patient. And uh, it's really important, I think, to have the expectations of the patients uh, from the treatment. You know, sometimes your expectations as a physician is really different from the patient's expectations. And I think it is this case of mixed urine incontinence, it's really about expectations, about uh, patient's preferences, um, it's a really a discussion. There's no one way to do. And, you know, we talk about your dynamics. Uh, even though you treat the patients by physio, by antimuscarinics, by botulinum toxin injections, by tibial nerve stimulations or what else, you don't follow the patients with your dynamics. You follow the patients with just with um, uh, history taking, exactly. questionnaires, uh, subjective outcomes. This is the most important in non-neurogenic cases, of course. Exactly. And talking about the counseling of patients, um, what do you do in your everyday clinical practice when you counsel them about uh, medications for OAB and also about side effects of these medications, but also about, for example, Botox injection in, in the worst cases uh, and, and the, the possibility of repeating injection so all the side effects of these uh, methods you can use to treat OAB, how do you feel they feel if you anticipate to them that they can have these side effects? Yes, Manuela, this is really a crucial point because in the domain of OAB, in reality, we don't really choose the treatment as 
uh, based on the, the efficacy, but based on the tolerance. And uh, since antimuscarinic is the first line treatment of uh, idiopathic OAB, you have to expose uh, the side effects. And uh, when you say to the patients, you've got dry mouth, constipation, perhaps memory loss, etc., and with an efficacy which is still moderate, they are not really keen on taking medications for the rest of their life. And sometimes they want, just want a treatment without side effects or just a definitive treatment uh, that they don't have to care of uh, every day. And um, it's really important to inform the patients about the side effects because if it happens, they are really easy going with that. Uh, for example, for botulinum toxin A injections, if you anticipate, you say, I'm going, it, you can have urinary retention. It happens for 6% 6 of cases with 100 units uh, doses. You can send them to, uh, to learn uh, intermittent self catheterization before the injections. And after, if there is occurrence of urinary retention, they are really cool with that. They say, you've told me. I, need, I know how to, to, to self-catheterize, I'm okay, I'm easy going with that. And so you can really uh, involve the patients in their uh, management exactly. and the side effects, of course, it's something that can happen, but they can re be really easy going with the tolerance after that. Yeah, and I totally agree with you, and I think we can close this uh, nice discussion uh, focusing on the uh, patient preferences, for sure, and the crucial point, I think it's a good counseling of the patient and creating, as you said, realistic expectations so the patient can be really happy after Indeed. the management of the symptoms. Indeed, Manuela. Thank you Indeed. very much, Veronique. Thank you, Manuela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.